How do we know the shape of our Milky Way galaxy if we are in it? We don't have a giant selfie stick, and we would have to travel billions of years on a spacecraft to photograph it from the outside. Nevertheless, I think you have seen such photos of our galaxy. The problem of determining the shape of the galaxy can be compared to a person in a vast forest, tied to a tree, trying to determine the shape of the entire forest. However, ancient Greeks, for example, realized that the Earth is round and even calculated its radius. It took Eratosthenes only the shadow from the sun and geometry to accurately calculate the Earth's radius. Similarly, we can obtain a fairly accurate representation of what our galaxy looks like. Our understanding of our galaxy has changed over time with scientific and technological progress. The first attempt to map our galaxy was made by the famous German-British astronomer William Herschel in 1785. He manually counted the number of visible stars and their distribution in the sky, creating a map of the galaxy with an incorrect shape, placing the sun in the central region. Until the early 20th century, it was believed that our Milky Way was the entire universe, and other observed galaxies were called nebulae, considered part of the Milky Way. Along with planetary nebulae such as the Orion Nebula, Helix Nebula, and Crab Nebula, which are indeed within our galaxy. In the early 1920s, the so-called Great Debate unfolded between Harlow Shapley, who claimed that the observed nebulae were other galaxies similar to ours, and Heber Curtis, who argued that the Milky Way was the entire universe. However, later, Edwin Hubble, using Cepheids, pulsating stars with a predictable period luminosity relationship, proved that the Andromeda Nebula is not within our galaxy, but far beyond it actually another galaxy similar to our Milky Way, thereby changing our perception of the universe forever. After Edwin Hubble's discovery, scientists began to study neighboring galaxies in more detail and concluded that the shapes of galaxies are not random. Despite the hundreds of billions of galaxies, they have different masses and luminosities, but structurally, they can all be classified into three types, elliptical galaxies, spiral galaxies, and irregular galaxies. So, the shape of the Milky Way is limited to these three options, and it remains to be understood which of the three is correct. In a city with strong urban light pollution, seeing the Milky Way with the naked eye is impossible, but I believe many of you have seen it outside the city. Even if not with your own eyes, you have definitely seen photos of the Milky Way like these. In our sky, both in the northern and southern hemispheres, the Milky Way is visible as a strip, this already suggests that we do not live in an elliptical galaxy, which has a spherical shape. Rather, our galaxy has a flat shape, like many other spiral galaxies we see in the sky. We observe them from different angles and perspectives. Some, like this galaxy M51, are turned to us with the plane of the disk, some at an angle, and some edge on. Being on Earth, we cannot make a 360-degree panorama of the entire sky and see the entire Milky Way at once. However, a spacecraft in space can do that. Here is a panorama of the entire sky from space, and on it, we see the entire Milky Way. And this is a panorama in the infrared range. Now let's compare it with this galaxy, NGC 4565. Both galaxies have a flat structure with thickening in the middle. From what we see and knowing the existing types of galaxies, we can say that we most likely live inside the disk of a spiral galaxy. If we lived in an elliptical galaxy, the sky would look completely different. Also, in favor of a spiral galaxy is how gas is distributed, its quantity, and the dominant colors in our galaxy. They correspond to the parameters of other typical spiral galaxies, indicating that our Milky Way belongs to the spiral type. If we know the approximate shape of the galaxy, the question immediately arises, where is our solar system in this spiral? The first person to address this topic was Harlow Shapley. Shapley was a proponent of the idea that the Milky Way is the only galaxy in the universe. However, after Hubble's discovery, he accepted this fact and managed to catalog over 1,200 galaxies in six years. Another important work by Shapley was the study of globular clusters conducted from 1914 to 1918 at the Mount Wilson Observatory on a 100-inch telescope, the most advanced astronomical device of that time. This was shortly after Edwin Hubble calculated the distance to Andromeda. The question of where the solar system is located in our galaxy was answered with the help of globular clusters. 
Globular clusters are densely populated regions of space packed with a vast number of stars. For example, the M80 cluster has a diameter of 96 light years, with the number of stars reaching several hundred thousand. For comparison, in the space around the Sun in the same volume, there are about 370 stars on average. Stars in globular clusters are gravitationally bound to each other and often have a common origin. These clusters are located above and below the plane of the galaxy and are the oldest objects in the universe. The age of many of them exceeds 10 billion years. Harlow Shapley discovered that globular clusters in the Milky Way are arranged in a spherical shape around the core of our galaxy, predominantly in the Sagittarius constellation. This was a key factor in determining our position in space. If the Earth were close to the center of the galaxy, as William Herschel assumed, globular clusters would be scattered across the sky with approximately equal density. However, the concentration of most of them in one area of the sky indicated that the center is located somewhere much farther than we thought. Shapley believed that the solar system is located in the peripheral region of the galaxy at a distance of 33 to 90,000 light years from the center, and his prediction was slightly exaggerated. Modern technological advances in astronomy estimate it to be 26,000 light years. Now we know the approximate shape and our location, but we still don't know the exact details of the galaxy such as the arms or bridges. To find out the exact details, there are special space telescopes that study our galaxy. For example, the European Space Agency's Gaia telescope is currently operating in space. It measures the positions and velocities of a billion stars in our galaxy and creates the most detailed three-dimensional map of the Milky Way. For example, this image, based on Gaia telescope data, shows radial velocities of seven million stars with red moving away from us and blue approaching. In fact, in this image, we see the rotation of our galaxy. I haven't mentioned that for a long time, we couldn't see a significant part of our galaxy at all, because much is hidden by gas and dust clouds in the visible range. However, the advent of radio astronomy and technologies allowing observation of space in infrared and other ranges have allowed us to look beyond dense gas and dust clouds and see much more including evidence of the existence of a supermassive black hole in the center of the galaxy, observing the orbits of stars in the very center. And it even became possible to calculate the mass of the black hole. And how did we learn about these tentacles that scientists call spiral arms? In the 1950s, astronomers studied gas and dust clouds where star formation occurs, using radio telescopes. Mapping from such observations suggested that the Milky Way has four major spiral arms, then in 2008, by observing millions of stars in the infrared range using the Spitzer telescope, scientists saw evidence of only two arms. However, the problem is that Spitzer sees less massive and colder stars, similar to our sun, which are much more numerous and have a longer lifespan, and they can be outside the spiral arms. But a later study focused, on the contrary, on more massive stars. Distances to them and their luminosity were calculated, Massive stars are rarer, and they have a very short lifespan, only millions of years compared to billions for less massive stars. This means they are found where they are born, namely in the arms, where a significant amount of gas, from which they form, is concentrated. Here is a map of the distribution of these stars, indicating the presence of four spiral arms. The picture of our galaxy is not yet complete. It was expected that the farther a star is from the center of the galaxy, the lower its orbital speed should be, as predicted by Kepler's dynamics and as happens in the solar system. However, on galactic scales, this is not the case. The graph shows rotation curves of galaxies. Curve A, which shows a decrease in speed with increasing radius, is what we expect to see, and the other flat curve B is what we observe in reality, meaning the speed does not drop further from the center of the galaxy. Such a rotation curve is one of the arguments for the existence of dark matter as the missing hidden mass necessary for such speeds. If you want to help a young astrophysical channel, then subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give it a thumbs up.